let's see how to solve a system of non homogeneous linear equations using Cramer's rule so I'm going to explain the method Cramer's rule I'll just try to explain it um, even if you are not able to understand it it must be clear it will be clear I, I think but then even if you are not able to understand it don't worry later we are going to do lots of examples on this the concept will be clear but still even though the method is not important knowing it might help you in the interviews in interviews they'll ask them in, in case they are asking about linear algebra generally they ask such things how does this uh, Kramer's rule work and all so while up, while doing the questions we can directly do it right but still let's know the method so what do I mean by homogeneous and non homogeneous equations is whenever you have anything like this ax plus by plus cz it is a equation in three variables x y and z are variables a b c and are constants right so whenever you have any such equation then it is called as homogeneous homogeneous because here uh, the degree of each term is 1 1 1 1 that is why it is linear so it is linear and homogeneous homogeneous means equal linear means 1 so degree of every term here is 1 and homogeneous means all the terms are having same degree got it and non homogeneous equation means see the degree of this equation is 1 this expression the degree of this expression is 1 isn't it x power 1 y power 1 z power 1 and also there is a term with degree 0 that is why it is non homogeneous which means all the terms are not having the same degree therefore such an equation is called non homogeneous and this equation is called homogeneous equation okay so now uh, how to solve a system of non homogeneous linear equations is non homogeneous linear equations is like this let us assume that x1 x2 x3 xn are in variables then a system of uh, simultaneous non homogeneous non homogeneous linear expressions will look like this a11 x1 a12 x2 so on a1 and xn equal to b1 like that we have n equations so when we have n variables we should definitely need n equations in order to solve them otherwise it will be difficult okay so now it is non homogeneous because there is b1 b2 b3 so on bn the terms are like this okay now let us assume that i represent delta as the determinant of all the quotients i'll take all the quotients and i'll arrange them in the determinant and i'm assuming that this determinant is not equal to zero okay that is the assumption what happens if it is equal to zero we cannot apply Cramer's rule the reason i'll tell you soon okay now let us say if this this is the determinant let us assume that capital a12 capital a13 which means if small a if small a's are representing the uh, elements of the determinant i am assuming that capital a's are representing the cofactors of the corresponding elements what do i mean by that is capital a11 is nothing but the cofactor of small a11 and a minus a12 this is the cofactor capital a12 right are you, are you understanding it I, I didn't do anything i just explained you what is homogeneous non-homogeneous equations and this is the set of n equations which are non-homogeneous linear equations now i am trying to solve what will be the values of x1 x2 so on xn okay simple first step is i am just writing the delta delta as if it is a determinant and this determinant is obtained by taking a1 a2 and so on okay and if small a's are representing the elements of this determinant capital A's are representing the cofactors clear you know about cofactor co co right how do we obtain the cofactor if a11 is representing the element the cofactor of a11 can be obtained by taking removing out this row and this column and finding out the determinant and multiplying it with minus 1 power 1 plus 1 right so why are cofactors important because we take either a row or a column and we multiply the elements with their corresponding cofactors and sum them up that is what is determinant if you remember the definition of determinant is small a11 into capital a11 plus small a12 into capital a12 plus so on plus capital small a1n plus capital a1n that is nothing but a determinant if you remember it we have already discussed it right so let's talk about this now these are the cofactors and these are the elements okay now what i'll try to do is i'll i'll take each equation each of them right 
and multiply the first equation with a11 and multiply the second equation with a21 okay so see this i'll take like this i'll take first equation and multiply both sides with a11 i'll take second equation and multiply both sides with a21 i'll take the last equation i'll, I'll multiply every equation okay like that and the last equation will be multiplied with a n1 after multiplying both these sides with these cofactors i'll sum them up i'll add all of them right then what we get is uh, in the left hand side x1 into a11 capital a11 small a11 plus capital a12 small capital a21 small a21 plus capital a n1 and small a n1 that is what we get x1 into this entire thing got it plus x2 into capital a11 into small a12 capital a21 into small a22 capital a n1 into small a n2 that is what i get with x2 right okay i'll just i'll just tell you what this this means see now what is this we are taking an element a column and across the column we have taken all the elements a11 a21 so on a n1 and we are multiplying them with their corresponding cofactors and we are summing them up by definition that is nothing but the determinant of the matrix which is containing all these values therefore this one is nothing but delta right and what about the next one what did you get for this x2 into if you observe it x2 into capital a11 into small a12 capital a21 into small a22 capital a n1 into small a n2 right so what is this we are taking a column which is nothing but second column and we are multiplying a column the elements each elements of this column with the corresponding cofactors of the other column right i have already told you that when we take either a row or a column and we multiply if you multiply the elements of a row or, or a column by the corresponding cofactors of the other row or other column then the value is going to be zero the expression the value of that expression is going to be zero which means if you take this column and if you multiply it with the cofactors of this column and if we add all of them up the value is going to be zero and the same thing applies if you take this column and if you multiply it with the corresponding uh, for, you know cofactors of this column the sum is going to be zero so likewise since we are since these are a1 a11 a21 an1 these are all the cofactors of this column and we are multiplying with this with you know when we sum up with x2 and we are multiplying with this when we sum up all the x3 terms so all of the remaining will become zero so that is why i am writing it here x1 into delta 1 into delta this is nothing but this one right determinant of that one plus x2 into 0 x3 into 0 so on into 0 equal to this entire term this entire term how did i get it b1 into a11 b2 into a21 and bn into an1 right not it so if you observe this term if you observe this particular term it is nothing but multiplying uh, with b1 the cofactor of a11 with b2 the cofactor of a22 with bn cofactor of a an1 so one other way of writing this one is see we are multiplying b1 with the cofactor of a11 and b2 with the cofactor of a21 and bn with the cofactor of an1 so one other way of getting the same expression is if in this determinant if you replace this entire column with b1 b2 b3 so on bn and if you try to find out the determinant by expanding the determinant across this first column we get that b1 into determinant of a11 isn't it therefore this expression is nothing but by replacing the first column of this determinant by the uh, all these constants b1 b2 so on bn right so since we are representing the replacing the first column with these elements let me call it as delta 1 right therefore x1 into delta equal to delta 1 where delta 1 is obtained by replacing elements of the first column of delta by the elements b1 b2 so on bn which means the first column of delta here 
all these elements are replaced with b1 b2 so on bn then we are going to get delta 1 right so what does it mean x1 equal to delta 1 by delta right so i think you understood the derivation even if you didn't understand it leave it if you are if you understood it, it is well otherwise what we shall do is we shall take lots of examples and once i solve them you'll understand it okay so i got this expression now similarly when you multiply instead of this instead of a11 a12 so on if you multiply it with a21 a22 so on a n2 sorry it is a12 a12 a22 so on a n2 if you multiply it with uh, instead you know instead of multiplying with these terms if you multiply with these terms then you know this particular terms right the corresponding terms and when they are multiplied and added they are going to give delta the determinant and all the other multiplications are going to be zeros in that case what do we get is this one x2 equal to delta 2 by delta so on xn equal to delta n by delta so now i think you understood why delta is not supposed to be zero in case if delta happens to be zero we are trying to divide something with zero which is not possible right so division by zero is not possible because you are going to get infinity so for that reason delta we are assuming that delta is not equal to zero in case if delta is not equal to zero we can solve the system of non-linear uh, equations uh, sorry linear uh, non-homogeneous equations using Cromer's rule this is the Cromer's rule what I'll do is I'll take example and I'll explain this all okay if you are planning to do masters, then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in India. I will give you all the reasons. So, first reason is, out of 1 lakh students who take GATE every year, there are only 500 seats in old IITs. So, all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And IITs, universities better than IITs, they have very good acceptance rate like 30%, 40%. But all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your masters in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India and these are all the services that we provide university shortlisting so depending on your profile we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply and statement of purpose building and then LOR guidance and GRE and English test assistance and education loan assistance so you don't have to have any collateral which, which means without any security now you can get education loan Getting education loan is very simple these days and whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting a, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join game of visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide, we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested, in going abroad, you have to just drop a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 555 454. Okay, thank you.